everybody and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. This is Gary Williams and today I'm joined by a man who studied flute, violin, piano, guitar and drums all before he was 13 and I think soon after that he discovered his true passion which was the vibraphone. His name's Kuba Cornick. Welcome to Cabaret Secrets, Kuba. Thank you very much for having me. Welcome. When I read your biog and saw all those instruments that you were studying before you were even 13, you must have made a bit of a strange child like me, really. When all your friends were out playing football and chasing girls around, you were studying the ins and outs of the violin. Exactly. That's, I feel the same way pe people, children were playing outside and I had to um, practice violin. I started uh, violin when I was in age of seven, and I was playing for six years. And I changed for percussion uh, class, and then I st uh, and I, in the meantime I, I started playing piano, guitar, drums. But um, you really need to choose one instrument. Now you're here on Cabaret Secrets because you're a cabaret performer. But what was your career path from you know being a young kid playing without all these instruments to ending up being here? I have a quite interesting story, I think, because um, when I finished study, oh, oh, I still was I still was studying, and then um, for summer I was going every year uh, as a I was basketing. Oh. So I was playing but in the streets, just playing in the yes, streets for money. In the streets, yeah. You, you call that basketing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Busking and is it Bus oh, busking. busking, oh busking, not basketball, of course, busking. <laughs> That's right. See my English. I speak only six, seven years in English, so I st I still struggle. Your native language is what? Polish. Ah. Yeah, I'm from Poland. I live all my life. I studied there, one Academy of Music, then second Academy of Music, all in Poland. And four years ago, I moved to the United States. So I had to uh, learn English. But so I, What age were you when you were busking? Yeah, I started in, I believe it was 1996. I was uh, busking in uh, lots of places in Europe, Germany, Switzerland. Just Austria. traveling around. Just travel around. I, I, I was fortunate enough to have my own car at that age. And so I took my friend who was a guitar player and we were traveling a lot. And as a duet, we were playing all around Europe. But very, it was a great experience for me. <laughs> I, I had uh, this contact with... with uh, sometimes it was a huge audience. And believe it or not, we had like 200, 300 people sometimes. This was just in the streets. This wasn't organized festivals. This was just in the streets? It was just streets. I mean, yes. was it just a means, a, a way to earn money to travel? Or were you actually earning a living at the same time? Yes, I was uh, very fortunate because we, we discovered it pretty early when I was still a student. And so when I came back after one mile and a half from the season, summer season, for the rest of the year, like lots of my friends, students, they, have, they had to work. I didn't have to work because I was making enough money on, on streets, which was really surprising for, first, for me first year. So I continued for about seven or eight years. So you were still studying. This is what you did in your break time. Yes, that was my break time. That was my just break time, summer, July, August. And um, so that, that was the, the f first thing. And then one day I remember I was actually in Norway, playing in Norway, busking in Norway. And I, I've got a phone call from, uh, from a friend. I didn't know him at the time yet, but he invited me to come on a cruise ship and play with his band as a drummer. I was thinking, okay, that's great because I've heard actually about the cruise ship gigs from my older friends, musicians. And so I wanted to go and try uh, when I went there, uh, I, I did five month contracts, uh, contract, but uh, after one month I completely hated it. I didn't like it at all, and I want to go home. But uh, why? I just I just um, the conditions for musician on the ship were not very good on that particular cruise line, particular uh, cruise ship, very small cruise ship. I didn't like it at all, and I wasn't treated uh, well. So I want I want to go home, but at the same time. I met uh, my girlfriend at that time, and I stayed, and I, met, my, I did five months on that ship. Oh, even months. though you were hating it, you had, I, you had I a, a new like interest, a I good reason like to it. stay. Then I, um, my story with the cruise ships uh, began, because I, I got another contract as a, as a drummer on different cruise line. Fortunately, I, I was able to be on the same ship with my girlfriend, who was also working on, on the ship. So, so we did, we've, we've done three contracts, I believe, together. And during the last three contracts, I, um, 
I started playing a vi- vibraphone. I, I bought a vibraphone, electronic vibraphone at that time, so I could practice in my cabin, mm. which is very uh, just great for any musician who wants to go on a cruise ship because uh, you don't work a lot during day, so you can practice a lot. And there was great opportunity for me. You were in a, a unique position of being able to not only see firsthand what lots of different guest entertainers were doing, what worked, what didn't, what the audiences liked, what they responded to, figure out why the successful acts were so successful. Right. There are a lot of uh, different factors uh, which make uh, the certain show successful. And, and when, you, when you see the, the, uh, and somebody's show... Uh, from the rehearsal to the show, and that, that's a really good school. And if you if you really take it seriously, if you if you pay attention for 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 little details, then it's absolutely helpful. It was helpful in my case to uh, to develop my own show. Also, for example, charts how they were written, how they are written. Like if you if you want to do a good show, you have to provide really good charts for musicians. And, and that's also a key to success, in my opinion. It makes so much difference that the act mm-hmm. comes well prepared with charts, arrangements that are very clear mm-hmm. and straightforward and easy to read and, and well written. And, and right. of course, you were on the receiving end probably of some pretty bad charts and some good charts as well, so you know what it's like. Yes, exactly. And some, some charts were really um, difficult to read, and that uh, takes a lot from from the, the the point from of performance you instead of instead of focusing on on, on music you're focusing on charts and and so that's just an example yeah. but i was able to to see that from the other side and, and, and learn. How long did it take you to sort of put a show together? How long did it take you to get to being uh, an act from being a drummer and what was that process like? That process was uh, long and complicated. I, um, I I was very fortunate again because my wife uh, is a great um, di- not only performer but a director. So I was very fortunate actually because when I was still a drummer on a cruise ship as a musician, uh, one of the member of or- orchestra, I asked the cruise director if if I can um, have a spot every week. Uh, in some some place on the ship, uh, then I can perform my concert. And uh, the cruise director, it was she at that time, Julie, she said, absolutely, um, it was a great experience for me because I was able to learn a lot, also English. <laughs> uh, that was a very big barrier for me, not just playing music, but uh, I soon I, I discovered that uh, you have to tell you your audience about yourself and I uh, my English was very weak so that was a big barrier for me and that was very stressful but I, I learned a lot I learned what works what doesn't and it took almost a year what were the main challenges for you in putting your show together on the beginning I didn't know what to play because I had a um, million songs I, I could choose from but what does really work you you, you never know because um, you can't ask people every time after after every song, did you like the song? Maybe I should play something else. Again, I'm very fortunate because my background is classical music, and but I also love playing pop, jazz music. So in my show, my goal was to just please in, in a little bit of everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm playing different music. Yeah. Now, what about the uh, the chat, the patter, talking to the audience? I discovered that um, you can't be uh, serious all the time. It's not like a concert in Philharmonic Hall that, that um, you don't have to smile, you just play the whole concert, people enjoy it. Um, here is a different venue, and uh, people are more relaxed. They, they expect you to, uh, to, you to be more relaxed too. So I had to smile, I had to um, say something funny, and you never know uh, what works. Um, there are certain things you, you can't talk about, like politics and religion. <laughs> are you still making changes to your show? Obviously, you have an act that works. Do you think, OK, that's fine now, I can leave that alone and worry about other things? Or are you continually changing it? And do you change your show much from ship to ship? Mm. I, I, never, I never play the same show um, twice, you might say. Um, always, always change, always change it, not only because I have uh, different uh, cruise lines, and uh, of course every cruise line is different, every cruise line has different uh, audience, so I have to change it all the time, and um, I always 
trying to reach the perfection and and always change something small yeah. things i mean the structure stays pretty much the same does it and you change just one or two numbers or, or you mean big changes they, they are quite big changes because uh, every time uh, not, may, not, not not maybe every time but i recently changed uh, completely my opener and my closer so and it works much better now and what about sound, getting the sound right on stage and in the audience as well? Do you talk much to the sound people or just let them do their own thing? Mm, good question. Every sound engineer has his own gear and, and he has his own setup. Um, and w- when you come on stage and you, for example, don't like, uh, for example, how, how the drums sound and you want to change it a little bit you kind of entering his um, his territory yeah. his territory and and <laughs> he might not like he might not like it he must have to do what you require uh, from him but but they are sometimes not happy to do that and that's what i mean this challenge is <laughs> It's a lot of people skills as much yeah. as anything, isn't it? Yeah. Well, exactly. And and on the end of the day, I'm thinking it's not very important, even if I don't feel fu- fully comfortable on stage because drums out are too loud or, or bass is not, not, not too loud or, or too low. It's not important. I If I reach the certain level of comfort on stage, uh, I'm not going to complain. I, I know lots of people who are more particular about sound, specifically the vocalist, because uh, it's very important uh, for them. We're a fussy bunch. Ah, it's just uh, <laughs> I, no, no. I, my wife is a, a singer, and I uh, totally understand how important for her is to to. to but to you'll take it. You know, you work a little bit with it. In your case, you'll work a little bit with the sound man. You'll try and get it as you want it. Once it gets basically good enough, is what you're saying you'll move on rather than some people will keep tweaking and playing with it and maybe not mind upsetting the sound engineer Mm -hmm. because you know they just want to make it perfect Mm -hmm. Uh, but you'll just say okay it's fine and it's it's good enough and i can work with this it could be a waste of time because even if you work with a salmon for an hour you might never reach uh, in particular case you might never reach your 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 100% 100% your comfort level so sometimes you just have to let it go and and then also in my opinion uh, when you let it go uh, you you give the the sound engineer some space and and, and he is willing to help you and if you really push him and uh, then then it's it's opposite effect so i i think personally that um the, the sound is not the most important it's important for us but sometimes we forget that uh, the audience is not very particular about the, the, the sound. They are particular about if it's too loud or it's too low, but they are not particular about the mix, just the mix. Mm. So um, why don't you let it go? And <laughs> that's what I tell myself. And just play because music is uh, what you play is more important and you have to focus uh, how to play uh, your best, not just how you sound. A very helpful tip would be to go uh, to if you if you perform, for example, in, in in Thursday, go every show on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and see how it sounds like. So you have more or less um, the idea uh, what, what to change during your show. And and again, I I have uh, not opportunity to 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 hear myself from the theater, uh, only from stage. So I have to trust uh, the sound engineer and. Even if something doesn't sound right, I don't mind because, again, it's just about um, how do you perform, how do you play or sing, and, and, and uh, I'm sure the audience will be um, uh, forgiving. It's interesting. I think that's a great tip, what you say about listening to how the sound engineer mixes other shows because it might be that the sound engineer likes to have the bass really loud or the drums really quiet or he might you might see a consistency or this guy always keeps the the lead vocal really quiet or when people are talking you can't quite hear what they're saying so you you'll see a pattern emerge and so as soon as you go into you do your rehearsal before you actually start playing anything you can say hi to the sound engineer and just say, oh, by the way, I, I, I tend to like, you know, when I chat, I talk quite quietly. So if you can turn me up when I'm talking, you know, a bit, that would be helpful because uh, I want to make sure people really hear me, which is a nice way of, you know, getting out in the beginning rather than it not being right. And you having to say, 
oh, you know, imply you're not doing a very good job, can you do it right, you know? Yes, yes, exactly. You are, you are only for a week as a guest entertainer. You're for a, for a week on a certain cruise ship, and like I said, they spend most of their time, so that's their home. And and you you come to their to their house or their home and and uh, and you trying to change everything rearrange everything it it could be a problem for them so uh, diplomacy is the key exactly yeah, that's a great word and what about with lighting as well do you do you just leave, what do you give the lighting guy and uh, and do you just leave it entirely to them or are you quite picky about what you want as far as lights are concerned. Mm. Normally, I wouldn't be uh, even think about uh, how to direct uh, my show for, for for light reason, but but uh, I learned from from my from my wife. She was always providing a list for a light engineer, a set list, a set list, it. set list, and and with all notes, tips, and soon I realized it's a great idea because. I've I've seen a lot, uh, and, and 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 by sitting in the audience and seeing somebody's show, I can tell how that person was working with a light engineer. You can see the big difference because you can always trust the light engineer, and he will make your your show very very nice with lights. But but uh, they can't guess everything, so it's very good idea to just give them some directions. How much detail do you go into with the lighting person when you're giving them this list? Uh, is it just a few bullet points, or do you go into quite some details to exactly what you want? Performing on cruise ships many years, I know what kind of equipment they have, and uh, what what they can do or, or can't. For some things in my show, I do want very specific looks. For example, I might say, well, I'm going to chat downstage, and so I need a chat light, and then I'm gonna, the song's going to start, I'm going to walk over to the piano, so I want the lights to fade slowly to the stool at the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first half of the song, when I'm at the piano, I want them to be, you know, all focused around the piano, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to walk downstage again, and I want to do some, um, you know, slow-moving lights. Right. And so I'll sort of, that sounds quite a lot when I say it, but I put that in bullet points, and it might be sort of five bullet points, just talking them through the sort of gist of the song that mm -hmm. I'm going to do. Is that the level of detail that you go into, or is it more than that? Because on some songs, that's quite a specific one, but for some songs, I might just say, this is a bright, lively tune with a, a big ending. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll put. Well, how, right. how does it compare to how it, what, what you give them? Uh, right. Uh, I, I give them three, four, five bullets, like you said. I, it um, depends what kind of song do you play, because some songs I play, uh, there's really nothing much to do. It, they just some consistent. You just play, you finish, and you need some big and some nice light, maybe maybe blackout or something. But but in some songs, particularly, I need to put a lot of details on my list because one song, for example, I play the small instruments called kalimba, and on the beginning I play solo. Band is in the dark, so mm -hmm. they already have one tip to turn off their lights. Mm. Uh, so um, I'll be Focus everything downstage yeah. on you. Yeah, so the spotlight is on me. Mm. And, and then, Always. Well, of course, at this <laughs> of point... At this, that's what they're paying for. At this point, it's just spotlight I want to... Yeah, so that's one tip. Then I, I stop playing solo, and then I still have my instrument in my hands. I go to the second part of the song when the musicians... Turn, turn on their lights oh, they, they, so you ask the musicians to turn off their, uh, the, their stand lights, lights, stand lights yeah. because you want all the focus to be on you and your instrument at the beginning even if the musicians stand lights are on that's, that's a little right. distracting you want the stage to be black except for you and your instrument at the front that's, that's right but that's that's just the third list which i provide to musicians yeah of course know, yeah they know what to do but for a light technician in this case he has to also bring some lights for them now because they are going to play with, yeah. with me now so they have to be in light too and then um, there is a solo during uh, during that song, which one of my musicians play, saxophone player particularly, and I want some light. Sometimes they they are able to to put spotlight on on uh, on a certain player, which which looks really nice because some people uh, um, when they my audience when they uh, they don't really realize what happens sometimes it's too much for them and they 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 watch me and then don't realize that suddenly I don't play but but the saxophone player does so we want to put lights on them and focus on on him or or her and and that's another tip and on the end of the song um, I I play um, softer 
So also less light, and on the very end, I I put lots of lights. Mm. So it could be five, six bullets. You know, it depends. That's, it sounds as we talk about it now. It sounds quite involved, doesn't it? And you you sort of put that as sort of five, six, seven bullet points, uh, and that that is quite that's quite a complicated one, relatively, isn't it? As opposed to a a, a slow ballad where nothing may happen except right. You, you just want to know how ex- the ending is yeah. going to be. It, it depends uh, on songs, whatever song you play. Like I said, one song might be very easy to light because he might just put nice, nice light. Like I play uh, one of my songs is "Fly the Bumblebee," so he he puts just like a like a yellow spots on stage, and the whole song is just yellow spots moving on stage, and that very easy. Mm. N- nothing, uh, nothing. You have to remember that he's got what an hour as well to program the desk and, and to an hour, an hour and a half to program a whole show from beginning to end. It's a lot. It's a big ask, isn't it? So you need to keep it simple. Absolutely, absolutely. So some some songs are, are more complicated, but most of them are easy. Another thing is that I always have uh, my technical requirement, which is which is in my point is very uh, important. Like a little rider, tech like rider. like a tech rider, exactly. Because I play three different instruments, and they require their electronics, so they require power. So I have to tell them uh, what to pro- to provide. Uh, in order to to have smooth rehearsal and then a smooth. Show. You give them this at least the day before your performance, right? I know that soon you're going to be back at home in the United States, where you live with your wife now, touring on land, which mm-hmm. sounds great fun. Mm-hmm. Of course, one of the big differences between performing on land and performing on a cruise ship is that you can't get away from your audience on a cruise ship, right? <laughs> you finish your show and you're going to be living with them and eating with them and chatting to them and sunbathing next to them for probably a week. That's right. How do you cope with that? Do you find that difficult, a challenge? No, not really. I, I never had a situation who, who uh, somebody came to me one time and said, I, I didn't like your show. Mm-hmm. Mostly they say, I like your show, it's always nice to hear it. Um, sometimes if I have a chance, I can ask them what, uh, what else they would like to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time, they, they, um, if they are more brave, they they give me uh, some advice. Some, some How tips. helpful of them! <laughs> uh, sometimes uh, uh, you'll be surprised. Sometimes they're very very helpful. Uh, recently, uh, one woman actually suggested I should do uh, a song, and I and I and I did it, and I'm doing that all the time now, and and it works. So, That's wonderful. Yeah, it's yes. great that you're open-minded like that. Absolutely, because we don't play for ourselves. We play for our audience. So whatever they want. Um, we, we, we want to give them. So some, sometimes they have very good uh, advices and it's a very glamorous job for us. We, we, we perform and then we have opportunity to, to, to meet our audience later. They so come the stars to, for a week. Well, it, it is sort of like, I don't feel like I am a star, but I, 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 I'm so happy to, to talk to people. And, and very, uh, another thing is that uh, you might uh, meet very interesting people. Mm. Um, this is this is great about our guest entertainer work that we always meet uh, nice guest entertainers. They're always hundred percent. I never met the bad person. It's always interesting. Everybody has a different uh, story, and uh, so it's very interesting to to meet this. And we tend to look after each other because we're all in the same situation. Most of us are traveling on our own, and That's we just right. want to have fun and, and have a nice experience. Okay. And also with the guests, you you meet often some terrific and interesting guests. And I saw uh, another act performing, and she went into the audience, and she said, uh, "Oh, how many of you here know?" Of Liberace, how many of you saw Liberace perform? Mm-hmm. And this fellow she was standing next to said, "I used to produce his shows." That's a nice surprise, right? And that happens quite often. Yeah, it, you never know who you're uh, talking uh, to because uh, yeah, it was a perfect example. Uh, so it's it's. Uh, I think the cruise ship is is generally the wonderful um, uh, idea of spend your vacation and. Um, for me, it's it's also uh, even if I don't feel this is my vacation because I work here, I still I'm able to talk to uh, different people. Uh, it's such a mix sometimes from different countries, and so you meet different cultures, and uh, it's just wonderful. I really really like it. It sounds like you've made a good career choice. Thanks for talking to us oh, today. Absolutely, thank you very much for having me. 
thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world, and get paid to do what you love. <laughs>